like I just said, don't let the size of, you know, any big American cruiser, don't let the size of them put you off because they, they have a lot of bonus points and they always, always bring a smile to my face. Hi folks, Toad here with Visedown.com and welcome to the review of the Indian Springfield and this is the Dark Horse edition of the Springfield. There is a heck of a lot of bike sat there right in front of me but I'm going to come on to that in a moment because one thing that I've learned from riding big American bikes and big cruisers and big sports tourers and big tourers and adventure bikes is don't let the numbers put you off because um, they only tell part of the story and that's very much the case with this thing here so what is it well it is twenty two thousand three hundred and forty nine pounds <laughs> which makes me want to bite the back of my hand there is a standard springfield which comes in at about twenty one thousand um so this has got the thunderstroke uh, 116 cubic inch engine in it so it is an 1890 cc lump of american muscle sat there right there beneath uh, between the frame rails um it's not terribly terribly powerful as with all big american v twins it's pushing out probably just around about 100 horsepower but the horsepower is really not where these bikes like to play it has got a claimed 168 newton meters of torque which is stump pulling if you're wondering it's less than the triumph rocket 3 uh, but it's probably a lot more than anything else you've ever ridden unless you've ridden a triumph rocket 3. Um, this model this engine sorry it's got some very clever little tricks to it so you look at it and you think that it looks old school and it looks like archaic technology but hidden within those engine casings and those barrels is some pretty smart tech obviously it's fully fuel injected um, which is very good it has got a lovely ride by wire throttle as well um, the other thing which I really really like and uh, I've never ridden a, a, a big v-twin like this that's got it is the cylinder deactivation whereby it deactivates one of the cylinders when you're sat ticking over in traffic and also when you start decelerating the bike the bike um, using the engine braking it's really really trick um, and on this is a really really good feature because if you're traveling with somebody else on the back takes all of that head banging out of the deceleration when every time you shut the throttle big v-twins like this big lazy v-twins they tend to have um really really strong engine braking and it's try and combat that and on this it absolutely works you don't miss it either because the brakes are fairly good on it so you can sort of take up that engine braking by using the front and the rear brake what else has the engine got this bit trick well we've got three riding modes um you start in standard which is the the smoothest throttle response and the thr uh, smoothest engine mapping um, and then you've got tour which ups the ante a little bit to give you a little bit more response and a little bit of a sharper throttle and then you've got sport and i have been spending most of my time funnily enough in sport mode for the simple reason is that you can light up the back tire of this thing on a perfectly dry road just using the throttle and it is a shitload of fun um roundabouts as well are exceptionally good it, actually no not roundabouts any corner basically you can light up the back tire on this thing and just go drifting about the place which is a shitload of fun to do on a bike that basically weighs getting on for half a ton add me to that weight and yeah it's definitely on half a ton so yeah three riding modes and they all are distinctly different um i would say that if you were going to travel long distances sport would probably get a little bit boring after a while um i also noticed that sport gobbles up the fuel quite a bit more than the other two riding modes so while we're talking about riding modes and gobbling up fuel uh, one of the things that i actually the first thing that i did when i got this bike was i hopped on it and rode 200 miles up to um a holiday home that my in-laws have got up in lincolnshire so it was a very thorough first impression sort of road test of the bike um and i brimmed it just before i left and got up to mablethorpe 200 miles later which wasn't 200 miles the boring way the last 50 or 60 miles of it was pretty much all twist all twisties around Cadwell Park and over the Lincolnshire Wolds and I was really quite impressed to see that we'd still got about a third of a tank of fuel left um, that estimation was kind of uh, reaffirmed with me when I went up to fill the bike the next day 
because uh, I didn't have to put very much in it to get it back up to the brim again. Going by my calculations, I'd averaged on that trip about 45 mpg, which isn't bad. And a lot of that was cruising at 80, 85 miles an hour on the A46 up till Newark. And then the rest of it was all sort of the last 50 or 60 miles was all tight and twisty sort of back, look, back roads and B roads over the Lincolnshire wilds, which as we know, riding like that does take a lot more fuel. Um, the, the suspension is plush and it's fairly forgiving and you can get away with things that you wouldn't think you can get away with. Um, I took my missus on the back while we were up there as well and did a few trips with her on the back and she really complimented the ride of the bike and how smooth it felt. Um, I mean, obviously I wasn't going very fast when I had her on the back um, but yeah she was really complimentary about the ride and the quality of the ride and how comfortable it felt. So I think it's also helped it's got an exceptionally comfortable seat um, it's a sip sort of a king and queen sort of style seat but it is very very well padded it's got that lovely contour to the back of the seat where the rider sits which means you just never feel like you're going anywhere you feel nice and secure so the total weight of this thing wet it is 360 kilograms um, okay so one of the things that I do find hard with big bikes such as this is the manual handling of them and yeah it is a bit of a beast to handle there's a couple of times where i've had to get a mate to just pop over from next door to help me push the bike out of my garden gate because it's quite narrow um i kind of because i'm such a short ass i always think that bikes that are over sort of 300 kgs that are quite long and quite sometimes difficult to manage i always think they should have a reverse gear um, there are some out there that have got it. Honda Golding's got a really, really good first gear that's very easy to use and very accurate. Um, it would be a nice addition to this bike, I think. It just takes some of that stress of ownership out of some people's minds. People like me who maybe don't have acres and acres of garage space or the entry to their garage is coming down an incline. You don't want to be having to push the bike around in situations like that. Um, so yeah, reverse gear would be helpful, but other than that, once you're on the move and moving through traffic, it's a lovely thing to ride. I've been really, really impressed with it. Like I just said, don't let the size of, you know, any big American cruiser, don't let the size of them put you off because they, they have a lot of bonus points and they always, always bring a smile to my face. The older that I get, I think the more of a fan of bikes like this I become. Uh, I don't know where that's going to end up. Probably in bankruptcy. So, um, one of the things that I enjoy doing on big bikes like this is kind of taking them past their natural comfort zone their natural habitat and that's what I've been doing on it I've just been going out and having a play obviously did the the run up to Lincolnshire which involved you know two and a half hours of just sitting on the A46 going in a straight line and everybody knows cruisers can do that and everybody knows that's what they're designed for but you can go chasing apexes on them I mean the front boards on this are probably going to need replacing when it goes back to Indian because yeah I've ground them down quite a lot but it's just a whole heap of fun taking something that is so big and so heavy and should be so all at sea going round twisty roads, twisty back roads, over the Lincolnshire Wolds, whatever, wherever you want to do, go and do a track day on them because they bring a smile to your face, they make you smile and that's what motorcycling is all about. While we're talking about handling, just quickly mention the brakes. They are rather large four pot calipers up front with big old beefy discs kind of because of the weight of the bike the geometry of the bike there isn't a massive amount of bite in the brakes and you do need a full handed squeeze on the lever to get the thing to haul up to a stop that said i've never really been in trouble with the brakes i've never really outbraked myself because when you're riding one of these things you have to kind of think that far ahead that you can't just decide to brake for a corner right at the apex and tip the thing in because you're going to end up in the ditch um, the ABS system is a two channel ABS system so it's not switchable, um, doesn't involve any cornering ABS like that and you do really really have to push it before it cuts in but when it cuts in it's, it's a little bit abrupt, it doesn't bleed all of the pressure out of the lever like some ABS uh, systems, it seems to work really well in retaining the pressure in the lever but it is quite abrupt when it comes in eventually, um, even on dry roads like today it, you can feel it really cutting in on the front end and at the rear end as well. Equipment wise, it's, it's, you know, it's form over function on this one. You've got that big old taco sat on the top of the fuel tank, which has got your speedo running all the way around the outside. There's a small LCD cluster in the center of that, which has got a load of bits of information that really, I'm not really bothered what it tells me. All I need to know is when I've run out of fuel and whether or not I'm breaking the speed limit and by how much. 
Another thing that you don't get with this bike is traction control. And as I said earlier, I'm absolutely fine and dandy with that because riding it without traction control when you've got that amount of torque on tap is just an absolute hoot. And Mr. Indian, uh, marketing PR manager, I'm really sorry about the state of the back tire. If you need to bill it for me, just send it through to my home address. So what do we like about the Indian Springfield Dark Horse? I'll tell you what I'm really, really impressed with, and I haven't mentioned it in the, re in the review so far, the build quality of this thing is absolutely brilliant. There is virtually no plastic on it. Apart from the switch gear, everything on this bike is metal. The panniers are made of plastic and that is about it. It's all put together really, really well. And I'm, I've just been so impressed with it. You could just sit here and look at it and stare at it for hours and hours on end. It's a really lovely looking little bit of kit. The other thing that I like is the comfort on it. It's all day comfortable for rider and pillion passenger. I mean, it's if you're gonna buy a bike like this, the chances are you're gonna to wanna to go places on it. You're gonna want people to see it and it's gotta be comfortable for you to do that. And it is supremely comfortable. And the final thing that I like about this bike is that every time you ride it, you get to stare down the top of that headlight like you're staring down the barrel of a Springfield rifle and you aim it at the next apex, open the throttle and in a cloud of tire smoke, you'll be there eventually. But you'll have such a smile on your face. It just never fails to make me grin when I ride this bike. It's going back tomorrow and I'm swapping it for an Indian Challenger, the new one with the power stroke, something or other. It's a more modern engine and a, a, a better engine apparently. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna be a little bit good to see it go, but can't wait to swing my leg over that Challenger and see what that's like. What don't we like about the Springfield um, Dark Horse? There's a couple of little design touches and I'm being really nitpicky here, so don't hate me. Things like the clutch and the brake lines running down from the handlebars. I mean, it would have been nice if we could have maybe tucked those inside the handlebar. I know it all adds to the production cost of the bike and there's an accountant that's gonna have kittens when you ask to do it. Yeah, it would just finish that front end off and make it look a whole lot tidier and a little bit nicer. And the only other thing that my missus picked up on, but then again, she wasn't riding in full length riding boots, she was riding in midi riding boots, is that the lid to the pannier dug into the back of her leg, but I don't think that'd be an issue if you're wearing full length boots. Really, there is not a lot to dislike about this bike at all. So there we go, the Indian Springfield Dark Horse. If you thought there was only one choice for big, American cruisers then frankly you were wrong if you thought all American cruisers were archaic and vibey and slow and didn't handle you were wrong I can vouch for that this is it's, it's easy to look at a bike like this and just think oh it's just for people who want to show off it's for people who've just retired and have dropped their lump sum on one but actually it's a motorcycle that you can go out and you can ride it without worrying about it breaking down and you can just enjoy it and you can enjoy the way it looks and the way it handles and the way that it makes you feel and for that i think it's wicked if i had twenty-three thousand pounds would i buy one no frankly because i wouldn't be able to wheel it in and out of my garden every time i wanted to ride the thing and there is no way i'm parking that on the street if you've liked this review please let us know in the comments below and don't forget to hit like subscribe and the notification bell so you can stay up to date with all of visor down's latest reviews for all the latest news and reviews head over to visordown.com cheers folks